Welcome to John Gets Games. Today we'll be playing a full two-player game of Terra Nova with my friend Dave who's going to join us here in the studio. We're going to start things off with a brief overview of the game, then we'll play the entire game, teaching it as we go, and we'll finish things off with a small discussion there at the end. Now before we get into all that, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, that you please click the like button for it down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support this channel and gain access to a bunch of different perks, then please go to patreon.com slash One of those is my exclusive opinions episodes, where every week or two I talk about all the games that I'm playing recently, both the things I like and don't like, and I've talked about hundreds of games in that way now. Um, you can also gain access to some of my videos early and advertisement free, and you'll gain access to an exclusive podcast feed where you can hear audio versions of all of the vlogs that I make, including those opinions episodes. Now, the final thing I'd like to ask is if while you're watching this video, you see us accidentally cheat, or maybe you see us take a turn and you think we really should have done something differently, or perhaps you just have thoughts about Terra Nova in general, then please comment about those things down below because we'd love to see that kind of feedback. All right, let's now jump into the game. Hey Dave, welcome back to the studio. Ah, oh, glad to be here. Terra Mystica is one of my favorite games, so I'm excited to play this one. Yeah, this is Terra Nova. So it's a, in a lot of ways, streamlined version of a game called Terra Mystica. It certainly has less going on, but it still has a decent amount going on. So let's jump into the overview. Now, as you can see, we've got a big map out here with a whole bunch of uh, spaces on it. And there are five different types of terrain in the game. And there are also five different colored factions that match up with these specific terrain. Now, I'm going to be playing as a green faction, specifically the fairies. And that means I only really interact with the green spots out on the board of their forests. However, there are ways to change the terrain, turning it into the kind you like. So, for example, I could put this here, and now it's a forest, and I can build on top of that. Um, the way we do that involves this little circle down here with shovels, and we'll talk about that in more detail later. So, the structure of the game is we're going to go through five different rounds, and in each round, a specific thing is incentivized that'll give us some more points. These are shuffled up at the beginning of every game, and then we're going to start getting income. Then we are going to take actions. Uh, Dave and I will go back and forth doing singular actions until we both pass, and then we will move into the next round. Now, the actions that we're doing are going to allow us to add houses out onto the map. These are the houses right here, and as we remove them, we're going to increase the money income that we get. Another thing that we can do is actually swap a house on the map out for one of these trading houses, essentially doing an upgrade. You can also upgrade a trading house for a palace, and this is how you get to these more and more powerful buildings. Now, when you remove these, they also increase various types of income, and I'll explain those as we go. And the palaces are uh, special. They give specific abilities when they are removed, and those abilities are different for each of the factions. So the goal of the game is to get the most victory points. And again, we're going to get those points by targeting the specific goals for each given round. Also, we're going to get points at the end of the game, depending on who has the largest uh, area of their buildings out here that are connected via these waterways. We can actually upgrade our ships so that we can extend down these waterways even more as we just expand out onto the map. Each hex can only have one building of a player, so we're certainly going to be jostling back and forth. Uh, one thing we can also do is spend power. There are these three bowls right over here. Uh, we're going to be cycling power, kind of charging it up, and then we can spend the power that's over here in order to do a variety of different actions. Some of those are printed out here on the board, and there are other ones that we can do as well. So this is certainly a resource we're keeping in mind along with money, which we use to build everything, essentially. So once again, we're going to play through five rounds, and then whoever has the most points is the winner. Uh, we'll explain again how all of this stuff works while we are actually playing. And now it's time for us to start, although we haven't actually finished the setup. Uh, right now, what we have to do is each place two of our houses down onto the board. And specifically, we have to place them down onto the terrain that matches our faction. I am a green faction, so I'm going to be going onto the forests. And Dave is blue, so he's going to be going down onto these water spots. I keep saying faction and i do want to point out that each of these boards right here is double-sided today i am the fairies which are green but the back side of this is druids who are also green and likewise with dave he is the sea dogs and the back side is water sprites now again each of these factions has its own special asymmetries and we're only really going to be talking about the sea dogs and the fairies in today's play so uh what we're going to do is uh place these down in turn order at the start and i'm going to be the starting player i've got this pawn right here so I'm going to put this down, then Dave will put one down, then Dave will put a second one down, then I'll put this here, and then we'll have four out. So we're going to fast forward through us placing these, and then we can actually start playing the game. So we've placed, uh, I'm going to be here and here at the start, Dave is there and there, 
And now in reverse player order, so Dave going first, we're going to take a bonus tile. These are nice, and you'll see why soon. Uh, so Dave, you get to choose one. Well, the choice for me is, um, these scrolls, by the way, are for end of turn uh, bonuses. Yeah, and extra points. I'm not really concerned about those right now, so I'm excluding those. The choice would be to get money or money and power. Yeah. And at the start of the game, because the shovel is worth six money, and we'll get to that later, uh, I think the oh, best value for me is to take this one. Cool. Which I'll place on my board there. Cool. And now I can choose one of these, and I'll take this one. Put that right over here. And then all the ones that are not taken will get a single money placed on top of them. So when they are taken, then the person who takes them will get this money. All right, it's time for us to start playing the game. Uh, as I mentioned in the overview, it's going to be five rounds long. And the first thing that we do in each round is income. Now, today, this is a two-player game, obviously, and we're playing with a two-player variant that uh, comes in the game. This board is double-sided, and this is specifically the two-player-only side of the board. The map itself is functionally identical to the other side, but uh, these options are slightly different. And the big difference is at the beginning of each one of the rounds when we do income, we are going to be adding neutral houses down onto the board. There's technically two ways to do this two-player variant. One is to add uh, up to two of these per round, and the other is to add a couple during setup and a couple later on with that gear. Today, we're going with the so-called Lucky Digger variant. And again, that means before we do any income, we are going to take one house of each of the faction colors that is not present in the game, which it's always going to be three of them when we're playing this two-player variant. Then the starting player is going to randomly choose one of them. That's red. And then I have to place this down onto a hex that has this house symbol on it that is also red. Now, when I place this down, it is going to block that spot for all intents and purposes for the rest of the game. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. But there's also reasons to be adjacent to different colored houses. Uh, and we'll talk about that later on. So I have to put it down onto one of the four red spots that's here, 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 or there. And while there are reasons to be adjacent to different colors, for now, I think I'm gonna put this over here or maybe over there. Now, I'll go with this spot. And uh, then now I can pass these two to Dave and then he'll randomly choose one and then place that. And I've uh, gotten a black one. Yep. So I'm going to figure out where to place this. The four options for that are right here. Interesting, it's the same kind of dilemma you had. Whereas it's nice to be next to a house, but you don't want uh, to block yourself. the space I'm putting it on is a spot where I have easier access to build to as opposed to some of the other uh, terrains. I feel like I'm going to also put this to the side. Thinking I could put it here and uh -huh. maybe use the terrain because I hope to build that way, but I also might want to build on the spot. So the safe option is to place it over here. Okay. Kind of out of harm's way. Yep. And these are just filling in some spots, not super consequential in this first round, but they'll probably become more consequential as we go uh, deeper into the game. So now it's time for us to do our income. And the way this works is we're going to look at our player area. And everywhere we have that hand symbol kind of holding things, that's going to be income that we get. Um, so down here, you can see these spots have the coins. We started by putting two houses on the board, and that freed up some spots for income. So I'm going to get three money plus three plus two. So that is eight money. But then I'm also going to get income from this bonus tile that I drew earlier. That's three more money, so I'm up to 11 money. And then I'm also going to get some income in the form of power charging. The bonus tile I took is going to charge up three power. And also, as the fairies, I get this asymmetric benefit that Dave does not have. I have a permanent two power charge as my income. So technically, I have five power that I can charge up. Now, the way that works is we're going to look over here to these bowls. There's bowl number one, two, and three. And we can spend the power from bowl three back into bowl one in order to do various strong effects that you'll definitely be seeing soon. But the key is we have to get the power into this third bowl. Now, whenever we charge up power, if we have any in bowl number one, then we must charge from bowl one first. Since we have some here, that means we do have to start. Again, I have five charges, so that is a single charge. There's still one here, so I have to do that, and let's use two of them. Since there's none here, now I look to bowl two. Since there's some here, I must charge out of there, and I have three more to go, so I can go one, two, three, and just like that, I've used all five of my charges. All right, that's me done, so now you go, Dave. All right, these sea dogs would like to collect their bountiful treasure, and it works the same as the fairies. Down here, I have three, three, and two for a total of eight, but also the tile I got gives me two, for a total of 10. 
Nice. And you don't have any power charging not as part yet. of your income right now. Not yet, anyway. Awesome. So that's income done. And now it's time for the action phase of the round. In this phase, we're going to go in turn order, starting with me and then back to Dave. And we're each going to be performing one action. And uh, once we have run out of things to do, then we're going to essentially bow out. And we'll talk about how that works later on. So I can now perform the first action of the game. Now, the game comes with a cheat sheet, and it shows the seven different actions that we can do on our turn. And I'm going to do this one, the make habitable and build action. So the way this works is I want to construct this house right here. It's going to cost me four money, but I have to construct it down into a forest. As you can see, these are the five different terrains. And as the fairies, I can only build in the forest. Now, when we look out of the board, the other thing to consider is that I can only build into positions that I can reach. Now, you are always within reach of adjacent spots. So these are adjacent to this house. So that's fine. And these are all adjacent as well. Um, and you can also increase your reach with the ship over here, letting you go down the river. And I'm sure we'll talk about that soon. Now, here's the trick. As you can see, there are no forest spots directly next to me. So I have to modify the terrain, making it habitable. And that means I need to make it green. So if we come back down over here, you can see that there are these shovels in the different types. Now, what this means is the proximity to the top is how cheap it is in shovels to actually change the terrain. If I want to change water into forest or the volcano into forest, then I just spend a single shovel and you can pay for shovels at a rate of six money for one or 12 money for two. So what that means is if I want to make a desert or a swamp habitable, that's two shovels or six more money, which is a lot. So I think I want to specifically target water or a volcano. And I think that's why I'm going to go right over here. It's within reach because it is adjacent. And now I'm going to have to spend six money to cover for that shovel. So I can spend that. And then I take one of these tokens and I place it on top. So that means this is now a forest. Now that was just making habitable. The next thing that I can do is build. Now when I build, I simply construct a house onto a forest spot on the board that I can reach and we just made one. So I'm gonna construct this and that is gonna cost me four money so I can pay for that. And then I'll put it right over here. By doing that, I've opened up some more money income in the next round, which is certainly nice. I did spend 10 out of my 18 money, but I still think that was good. Now there's another reason to put this out in addition to income and that is this bonus tile right over here. Now, as you can see, that says I'm going to gain two victory points every time I build a house during this round, and that token is associated with the first round. So we are extra incentivized to build houses in this first round. I built one house, I'll get two points, so that brings me up to two points total, and that finished my uh, action. So now you can go, Dave. All right, I'm going to do a very similar thing to what John did, but... With a twist. With a twist. Yeah. Instead of paying the six money on the board over here like he did, I'm going to use the action I got at the start of the game when I took this scroll. Yeah, it's a bonus that, that you get to use once this round. That's great. So I'm going to take... Uh, all bonus actions are um, ide identified by this octagon. And what you do is you place a blocker marker on top of it to show that you've used it. And that lets you do the action. Now that action is still the first action, the make habitable and build. And the shovel is the make habitable part. So... I have a free shovel, and if you look at my board, I can turn these kind of swamp lands into wetlands or water lands for one shovel, which is my free shovel, and that's going to go right here. Ah, uh, yeah. And like before, because I have just made habitable, I can do a bonus build action on the land I just made habitable, and I'm going to do that. So I'm going to take the house, place it there, and I'm going to spend four money to do that. Next, because there is a bonus tile here, just like what John had, I'm going two to points. get two points. Nice. Now, an interesting thing happens when I place a building or upgrade a building next to one of John's buildings. Yeah. Uh, the adjacency matters uh, as long as they're right next to each other. And I get to do um, charge up my power, uh, essentially. Uh, every time an opposing building is placed or upgraded adjacent to one of your buildings, you get to charge up one power. So that means I can take this and move it right over there. So I got a perk for Dave building right next to me. And if, for example, that had been there, I know it would need to be a forest and Dave built there, I would actually charge up twice, once for each of my houses that are next to the new house that was built or upgraded. Again, if this was turned into a trading house, then once again, both of these would um, get that bonus of charging up a power. So thanks for that, Dave. Oh, you're welcome. 
<laughs> and my turn is done. Nice. All right. Well, I've got a bunch of options. Uh, one of them is I could upgrade a house into a trading post. But the thing is, if I do that in the second round, because this was randomly placed on the two spot, I'll get three extra points if I wait until next turn. Uh, moving these away is going to give me power charging income, which is nice. But it also makes a lot of sense to chase these. You know, don't define your entire game around it, but it does make sense to keep them heavily in mind. So I think what I'm going to do instead is a power action. There's all of these out here on the board, and they can each be used once per round. But you have to spend this amount of power. And I think I am going to go big. I'm going to go for this one. I I've been going back and forth. This is going to cost me six power. And whenever you spend a power, it must come from the third bowl here. And you can spend a power from here, even if there's power tokens elsewhere. So I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. And now I can activate this. Now that's going to give me two shovels. And it's very similar to the action that you just saw Dave do. And you'll notice that action's also over here. This gives me two shovels when making a space habitable, and two shovels is enough to make essentially anything habitable. Now, there is something kind of special about this, and that is that I can actually split these shovels up as long as I make specific spots habitable. So I could make a single forest out of a swamp or a desert, or I could make two volcanoes into forests or wetlands into forests or a mixture of those two. I don't desperately need to go to swamps and uh, deserts in this moment, so I think I'm going to do the split version. And then I'm going to make this a forest, because again, the uh, wetland comes into a forest with just one of those two shovels. And then I'll put this one over here, because on the other side, the volcano turns into the forest with just one shovel. So again, that lets me split it up, and now I can build one house. So even though I made two things habitable, I can only put one house down. That house is going to cost me four money, just like normal. And I think I'm going to build it here. There is a slight chance Dave could come over here and then uh, re-transform <laughs> this. Uh, looking at Dave's board, it's just one shovel between the forest and going back to the wetland. And it would just be a bummer if he did that, even though I think it's unlikely. So yeah, we'll put this here. And of course, that's going to get me two more points. That's my turn. All right, back to me. Yep. And I'm considering two options here. And of the two options, I've decided to also spend my power. Yep. I'm going to take the four power here, so one, two, three, four, and choose one of the options on the board that take four power, one of these three. Yeah. And of these three, I've decided to take the shipping action. Nice. I really so, thought about this as well. Yes. Yeah. So the way this works is Dave is going to upgrade his shipping power from zero to one. Now, one of the actions that you can do for your full turn is just spend eight money to do this. But by doing this power action instead, Dave is spending four power and zero money in order to slide that over. So that's going to give Dave two points immediately, and it gives Dave one sailing power. Sailing power is important because, as I said, whenever you construct, you have to go onto a habitable space that's within reach. And you can extend your reach down this river with that sailing power. You can extend by one space per sailing power. So because Dave has one sailing power, he can essentially extend right over here. This is within Dave's reach because that is the one sailing that he just did. And if this is expanded even more, then you could reach even farther to then jump onto spaces. So this river is really important. I mean, in all honesty, I feel like my faction should just be able to build on the river. <laughs> As seems, the sea dogs? Yeah, it seems like they'd be <laughs> right at home. But alas, that is to be. I still need to get my two points yep, for the sailing action. Very nice, very and nice. And the power action is my entire action, therefore it is your turn. Awesome. So I've got four money and one uh, power that I could use. I do want to mention that there is a optional action over here where you can just spend one power to gain a money. Um, this ratio over here is a lot better, four power for seven money, but still, this is nice if you find yourself in a jam. I don't think I am, though. I think I am going to be a bit of a one-trick pony in this first round, mostly because of this incentivized uh, house-building action. I am going to build another house. I'm not going to make anything habitable. I don't really need to do that, and I don't have the money to afford it. But I do have the four money that I need to build this house onto a forest that is within reach, and there's one right here. I made that habitable on my last turn. So I can put this down and then get two more points. All right, Dave, you're up. Very nice. Well, I upgraded my shipping action for a reason, and this is the reason. I'm going to do the make habitable and build action, but I don't really have to make anything habitable. As pointed out, I can just reach this yeah. space with one skip over the river. As soon, as soon as I saw you making that upgrade, I figured this is probably where you were going. 
So I'll pay my four money, take my house, and place it there. Nice. It is not next to any of John's buildings. Nope. Um, so no, 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 power no power granted. Gained. And you get two points. That's right. All right. Well, it's back over to me, and I think I have to drop out of the round. I have no money, and I don't have enough power to really do anything. So if we look back over here at these options, drop out is the bottom one. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is take the starting player token, or I guess keep it. The first person to drop out gets to keep this token, so I'll be the start player in the next round. And then if I had a dropout benefit printed on my bonus or anywhere else, I would activate that, but I don't. The dropout benefit looks like this with that scroll, and yeah, I don't have anything. So now what I do is I bring this over here, but I don't put it into the market just yet, and I have to take one of these, and I'll get the money that's printed on top of it as well. That'll be the bonus tile that I'll get in the next round. So I'm essentially cultivating my income by doing this. So uh, six extra money or two power bumps, but also giving me two points for every trading post I have. Currently, I have none. And this one is four power bumps and four points for every palace I've built. And again, I haven't built any of those yet. And I think I need money. So I'm going to take this. That gives me the money that's printed on it. And I'm going to put this face down in front of me to make it really obvious that I've passed. And then this will be added right over there. And I'm done. So now, Dave, you can go for as long as you want to because I'm passed for the round. Well, unfortunately, that may not be very long. <laughs> unfortunately? Yes, or fortunately for you. <laughs> the, um, uh, this space here is within reach. Yes. And I was thinking about going there. Sail across, yeah. But in order to do, I planned ahead for next turn, and in order to do that, I need to stop now. If you had left that six money space, I could have gone ahead and done that. Ah. But since you didn't, nope. I'm going to just um, basically plan for the future and pass now and save this nine money for a for a, the next turn. A big second round. So nice. Well, I will take my scroll, remove the blocker, and put it back. And it's worth noting you you can't choose the one that you're putting back. So you choose, and then this gets added in. Yes, and it, it brings an interesting strategy because if John really wanted this, he could try to stall until I pass, so that I could get access to it. Yeah. So John's left me this one, which is very strong. It's nice and flexible. I think I'm going to go for some points and take the palace scroll. Nice. This may be, I guess, giving away what my plans are for next turn <laughs> a little bit. That's fine. That's fine. But it comes with the money, so yeah. the sea dogs like that. Nice. All right. Um, you've dropped out, and once everybody's dropped out, that means we're done with the action phase. That means it's time for the end of round phase. Uh, at this point, if either Dave or I wanted, we could do this power exchange, just moving this down in order to get one money each. I'm not doing it. and It doesn't look like Dave can. Now we have to remove the X tokens. So we're just going to move them back. So we're essentially opening everything up to be able to be used again. Then we're going to add one money onto each of the remaining bonus tiles. And as you can see, this one that hasn't been chosen yet has two money on it for one of us to take. It's getting more and more tempting. Yeah. After that, the final thing that we do is flip over the round scoring tile for the current round. So we just do that to show that we're done with the current round. And now we can move into the second round. So the first thing we do is income. And again, since we're playing the two-player variant side of the board and we're going with the Lucky Digger version, before we do any income, this is going to happen. I am the starting player. So I'm going to once again take one house of each color that we're not using, shuffle these up, and then take one of them black. So I have to put this down onto a swamp. It's going to be one of these because it has to be a spot that has a house symbol. And honestly, I kind of like this. Uh, the swamp is two shovels away from the forest, so it's unlikely I'd be building here anyway. And by having this here, I'm going to get access to a benefit that we're definitely going to be talking about very soon. So yeah, I'm going to go with this. All right, now it's my turn. I'm going to choose one. Yeah. And it is a red. red. That's a little unfortunate. I was kind of hoping for a yellow. But I'll make do with what I can. And it turns out the red only has one spot it can go to. Wow, because we covered so many. This one got covered there, and then I covered... You covered two of them, one of yeah. that. Oh, and the... Okay, well, there's no choice. You must put yeah. it there. wasn't me. They're two away from me, and that's just too expensive. So yep. I'll put it there. Okay. All righty. Doesn't look like we're going to be <laughs> touching each other's uh, settlements, uh, at least in this area. It should be noted that when placing these neutral buildings in this two-player variant, it does not trigger... Uh, power for for adjacent buildings. That's right. That's right. Yeah, these are only here to block and to facilitate a discount that, again, we're going to be talking about really soon. All right, we can do income. We can go in player order. Normally, income happens simultaneous, but it's good to show it in order here on video. So I'm going to do this first. I can flip this over, and I am going to get 6, 7, 8, 11, 14, 
17, 19 money. I can just take 20 and put this one back. And then I also get one, two, three, four power charges. Again, it has to be from here because there are some in the one bolt. So it's going to be one, two, three, four. And I am done with my income. All right. For my income phase, I start with the money and I just have this down here, which if you add that up is a total of 13. 13 bucks. That's it. No. Uh, oh, right. no, you have some power and as I well. I do. And the, the scroll I took has four power on it. So yeah. I'll get that income now. Awesome. That's income done. So now it's time for actions. And I, once again, have the starting player token. So I get to go first. I only have one power in this moment. So none of these really nice things out here are available to me. And I think what I'm going to do is the first upgrade action of the game. Now, the way this works is I'm going to upgrade a house into a trading post. And the cost for the trading post is seven or 10 money. And that or is the reason I've been talking about discounts. Now, when you upgrade, that house is going to turn into a trading post. And if that spot is directly adjacent to any building of any other player color, including these non-player colors, then you pay the discounted price of seven instead of 10. Effectively, you're trading with them. So I guess you get that discount. So that's why I put this here, because now if I want to upgrade any of these, it's only going to cost seven money each instead of 10 money each, which it definitely adds up. So I'm going to spend seven money. And now I remove the leftmost one of these. And again, I have to replace any one of my houses. And I could do one of these over here if I wanted to as well. Realistically, I think I want to upgrade this one. So I'll put that there. And because this is directly adjacent to a building of any other player color, I will pay the discounted price, which I already have. Now this house does come back and it's gonna cover up the leftmost spot. So I lose access to that charging income, at least for the time being. And now the other thing that happens, as I mentioned before, is we are incentivized to upgrade into trading posts in this second round because the token was put there. Of course, if these had been randomly done differently like that, then we would have been trying to maybe make more trading posts in the first round, but that's not the way it was for us. So I get three points because I built a trading post in the round where that token is available. That's going to bring me up to nine. All right, Dave. Well, I hate to be a copycat, but I'm <laughs> I mean, going to do the exact same thing. However, yeah, I mean, these things can drive a lot of points. It makes sense to follow them when we can, at least. I feel like if I were first player, I would be explaining all these actions. <laughs> but as it turns out, I'm just going to do the exact same thing. So yeah. um, I am going to do the upgrade action. So I'm going to take this building off of the board. And the spot which I'm going to upgrade is this spot. Yeah. This is the only spot I have currently that will give me the discount. That's, yeah, because it's and adjacent to me. Because it is adjacent, John, I will pay the 7 instead of the 10. And because Dave upgraded adjacent to my building, I get to um, charge up one of my energy. So this will go here. Yeah, I didn't really like that. <laughs> anyway, and then I will place the house back onto my board, which will unfortunately cover up the two income there. Yeah. But I do get two income from the, uh, the trading post as well. Yeah, so yeah. It's kind of a wash. And you get your three points. Yes, I almost forgot. Thank you yeah. for reminding me. All right, it's back to me. I've got 13 money which is almost enough to build a palace or upgrade into a palace. Now, technically, I could get the 14th money by spending this one power, getting one money, and that's something I definitely have considered. But if I make a palace in the next round, I'll get five extra points. Now, palaces are really strong. It's good to have these out. If I made this one, for example, suddenly I get two extra money income and three extra charging income. Uh, this one over here unlocks the ability to make towns easier. We haven't talked about towns just yet, and I'm sure we will. I think, though, I'm actually just going to chase that incentive a little bit more. I'm going to spend seven more money to upgrade another trading house. Uh, I can put this one down over here, and I think that's going to be worth it to me. So this will go over there, and I get three more points for building another trading house in the round with this. You know, John, you could build next to my buildings, get the discount as well. <laughs> I could. I could be doing it here. You are correct. But then you'd be getting those charges. I would. And my bowl three is so empty right now. It's really sad. <laughs> anyway. Well, now we're going to get to the reason I did not build the extra house in the last turn. Yeah. That is so I have enough money to build a palace. Now, yeah. John mentioned the palaces. And when you upgrade to a palace, you can actually upgrade to either side. This side for me will give me a bonus income of four power. And it allows me to up my shipping track once for free. The other side gives me a special action that I can do once per round. And that will let me upgrade a house to a trading post for free. That's nice. Yeah. And that is the one I'm going to take. Yeah. Um, it's going to cost me 14. 
And then I will choose the rightmost palace. And the only place I can upgrade it is this spot where I have the trading post. Yep. And so the trading post goes back to my board and the palace goes there. Hey, thanks, Dave. Oh, you're welcome. I have, I have <laughs> upgraded, upgraded next to my building. Yep. Right, another power. You could always return the favor someday. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it'll happen. Just, you know, not right now. <laughs> yeah, uh, going around this one spot was, was really beneficial for me. But uh, that was my action, so it is now your turn. Awesome. Well, I got six money, and this is here. I think I'm going to be making another trading post. <laughs> I didn't really expect to do this, but it does seem like a good idea because that's going to give me even more of this charging income. A little bit less as time goes on, but I, I still think I like it. So yeah, I'm going to spend this as a free action to gain one money, and then I'll spend seven money in order to upgrade this at a discount. I'm going to put it right over here. <laughs> There's one more spot that I could upgrade, and I do have one more trading post, but I, I'm I'm definitely aiming to build a palace in the next round to target that, if I'm able to get the 14 money for it, which I probably should be able to muster. So that is going to get me three more points, and I'm done. All right. Well, I have unlocked this action, and so I think I should use it. Yeah, you should. So the way I use it is I cover this up to, to remind me that I've used it for this turn. And again, what it does is it allows me to upgrade a house to a trading post for zero cost, meaning it doesn't matter if it's adjacent to another player or not, uh, it still costs zero. Yep. And so the one I'm going to upgrade is this isolated house over here. All right. I'll put that back on my board, remove a trading house, and place it where it was. Now, this may have been a discounted free action, but it still counts as building a trading house. Yeah. And therefore, I do get the three points for here. Nice. Awesome. Okay. With that, my turn is over. Well, it's back over to me, and I think I have to drop out. I've got no money and I've got no power. Yeah, there's uh, nothing that I can currently do. Once I build this palace, or if I build this palace, that will unlock the ability to spend a couple of power and do one of these actions that we've already seen. Definitely nice to have, but I don't have it right now. So when I drop out, I'll once again keep this, so I'll be the starting player in the next round. Then I am going to take one of these, and <laughs> considering I have three trading posts on the board, and the fact that this will give me points at the end of the next round based off of the number of trading posts I have, that is pretty incentivized. However, it's the weakest income effect. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for it. It comes with a couple of money as well, which is definitely nice. So I can add this over there, and you're up, Dave. All right. Well, I feel like I should try to take less turns than you some, at some point. <laughs> so you so go I first. Could be first by at some point. But, yeah. you know, it is what it is. I only have two money. There isn't a lot I can do with two money, and therefore my only option is to pass. Yeah. I will return the scroll now. But you get that bonus, yes. Yeah. I have built a palace this turn, and so thus I have a palace when I passed. Therefore, for the one palace I have, I get four points. Yeah. So specifically, what this means is you count the number of that specific type of building you have on the board, and you get those points. If Dave had both of his palaces out right now, even if he built it in a previous round, he'd still get uh, the points for it. So yeah, that is going to be four points. And you have the lead. I have one uh, point. Commanding lead. <laughs> now you can choose one of these. Yes. And, well, I am tempted to take this one because my power game is surprisingly weak. Yeah. Uh, I do get the most value out of the shovel action, which I will take. Now. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. And it comes with a coin. Yeah. Awesome. So that is us done with the action phase. Now it's time for us to remove those X tokens, although we didn't use any of them this round, which isn't too surprising. Well, I used one. Oh, that's true. On my player board That's here. true. I take it back. You get to uh, refresh that. Thank you. Uh, now we add one money to each of these unpicked bonus tiles. And then we can flip this over and start the next round. So once again, um, extra incentive for constructing palaces in this round. You get five extra points. And now, <laughs> once again, I'm the starting player. So I get to take these houses, shake them up, and I'll be maybe placing this one. Okay, so it has to go here or there. And... <laughs> This is, uh, this is actually kind of interesting. The swamps are two shovels away from me, so I'm unlikely to want to actually modify this terrain here. But at the same time, I have to be honest, I don't really want to block this in case I do want to head over here because these are one shovel away. But if I don't go there, I go here, and that's going to give Dave the possibility of a discount in making a trading house on that spot. Ooh, this is tough. 
I think I'm going to put it here. I, I think if I go here, I'm too likely to kind of lock myself in. So we haven't talked about this just yet, but we are trying to make towns. Uh, I will probably be making a town in this turn, so I'll go into the specifics of that soon. But in order to do that, I kind of want to keep these separate so they're not touching each other. And if I went here, I would really be restricting the growth options of this if I don't want it to touch that. So I'm going to go there so I can potentially work my way over there where there's green, red, and blue, which are all quite nice for me. I mean, we'll see what Dave does. Dave could also mess these things up, but yeah, I'll put it here. So that gives you a discount on a trading house if you want it there. All right, now you get to randomly pull one. All right. And I've pulled a yellow one. Yellow. There's uh, all four. Yeah. We haven't put any yellow down it's the yet. the first yellow. And none of them are actually appealing to me. Yeah, that it's might start to funny. wall you in with the combination of this. You Oops. can just toss it over here in the uh, the wastelands. The walling is, isn't that bad because I have boats. That's true. And so I can just kind of build around over here. That's true. I actually wanted that spot, you, but you blocked me off there. Oh, really? I thought I was kind of being kind by doing this. Yeah. <laughs> it might end up being kind. I just changed my plans a little bit. Yeah. It's not that bad. And so I think I don't particularly care. However, there's the possibility I may expand down this way. Yeah. And therefore having a house right here. Oh, that's true. For the trade discount house discount here. here. Yeah. Per perhaps in the future. That works. I'm certainly not interested in this spot at all. Right. That's so, two shovels for you. Yeah, you're not going there. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So now it's time for income. I'm the start player, so I can go ahead and do that uh, first. It looks like I am going to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven power charges. So that'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So definitely have some power options in this round. And then for money, I'm going to get 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 16, 17. Very nice. Yeah. What you got, Dave? Well, for money, I have 8 down here, plus 2 for 10. And then my scroll has 2 on it as well for a total of 12. Nice. It is nice. Not 17, but <laughs> still nice. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I have a lot of uh, income coming from these trading houses, sure. but I didn't get the, the you know, essentially seven to ten bonus money for this that you can do every single round. Which, this is true. You know, if you add that to the twelve, that's it's almost like twenty-two money. It's a little bit better. Yeah, yeah you're not getting the power bumps, and uh, people may be wondering. You know, I have this. I get this base to uh, charging effect in each one of my incomes. And Dave doesn't have that. Dave has this other effect here. Uh, we haven't talked about it just yet, but we will soon. It involves those towns that, that will be happening very soon. So we'll cover that when we get there. And finally, I didn't do my power charge. I do get one for my trading house here. Hey! Which almost fills up my level two bowl. I'm getting there. <laughs> nice. All right. Time for actions. I get to go first. And I think I am going to open things up with upgrading into a palace. So in order to do that, I'm going to upgrade a trading post into one of these two palaces. That's going to cost 14 money. It doesn't matter if there's any adjacency. So I can spend all of that. So I'm back down to five. And then I think this is the palace that I want to build. Now, again, I have to swap this out for one of these trading posts. And I think it'll be this one. The trading post will come back and go onto the board. And remember, when I drop out this round, I'm going to get two points for every single trading post I have currently on the board. So I've essentially lost two points by removing that, but I still think this is going to be worth it. Next up, I'm going to get five points because I built a palace in the round where they are incentivized. So that's going to bring me up to 20. And I don't quite have enough to build a town just yet. So we'll talk about that soon. It's I do think it's going to be happening in this round, though. So now this means I have new income unlocked. That's three more power movement and two more money. And I have this effect where once per round, I can spend two power in order to do a single shovel, make habitable, and then build action. So that's certainly nice to have around. And I think that's going to be happening this round as well. All right, Dave, you're up. I was also thinking about building a palace. I have the money to do it. Huh. Problem is, if I build this palace, it's nice. I do get the five points and I'll have this extra income but I will cover this income back up as well. Yeah. And then I my income is looking pretty low. From so, a money perspective? Money and power perspective. Although I guess I will have a little more if I build the palace. That's true. I so, suppose if you did that, though, you probably wouldn't be doing too much else on this round. Yes. And you could very likely snipe this, which is essentially seven money, or that, which is five money and three power. It's something worth considering because I'm probably going to be doing a couple more actions. True. But at the same time... Um, I did consider it, and I just don't want to be holding on, like just barely holding on each time and trying to snipe. I guess you wouldn't be using the this money. power. 
Well, that too. Yes. Yeah. I do have a lot of actions to do, even if I do that right okay. away. Um, so I'm going to instead just kind of diversify and get more buildings out. And the first thing I'm going to do is the scroll I took, which um, is th just the same as I did before. I will cover that up. That gives me one shovel. And the swamp is one shovel away from the wetlands. Thus, I can turn this swamp here into a wetlands, or I don't know what it's called, actually. <laughs> um, wetlands works. Sea area. I'll call it wetlands, yeah. <laughs> it actually isn't a wetland. It's very wet. You could call it like uh, an inlet for your, your yeah, sea dog ships. like an island. <laughs> I think it's actually called island. Sure. Well, anyway, whatever it's called, that's what it is. And um, because I did that, I can do a bonus build action. So for four money, which I'll pay now, I'll take this house and place it right where I terraform. Nice. And you're right next to another one of these. Yes. Yeah. And, right. a, and another one because I have the sailing action. Oh, yeah. Okay. I like what you're doing there. All right. It is, it is, it, it is bad news for this if I want to expand down there. But all right. Let's see. Well, I've got five money, but I do have six power that I could use. And I think I am going to use that. I'm going to use three of it to activate this over here. Um, that lets me build a bridge. And this is the first time we've talked about bridges this game. Um, when I build a bridge, I'm going to take one of these and put it out onto the board. I do want to point out that one of the regular actions you can do in your turn is you can simply spend 10 of your money to build a bridge. But in this case, I'm spending three power to get around spending that 10 money that I do not have. Now, when you put a bridge down, you have to put it across one of these potential bridge site spots that go across the river. And that bridge has to be touching a spot that has one of your buildings. And by doing that, you make these two spots adjacent. So by doing that, I am now adjacent to this forest that I could uh, and certainly will be building into very soon. And yeah, that, that's how bridges work. All right. Uh, go ahead and cover up the action, Oh, yes. Because I, I now cannot build a bridge. No. Not you can spend I... 10 money for it. Oh, that's true. <laughs> but I cannot spend three power this turn to do it. No, no. It will be unlocked next turn, and I might take advantage of that. But since I'm on a house building spree at the moment, I'm going to continue this and um, spend four money. So I'll spend five and get one back to put another one of my houses down. And actually, I haven't thought about this. There's two places or three places I can put it. I right think here, there, and over there. Yes. Yeah, nice. And I feel that these two spots are pretty much mine. I don't think John can come in and snipe them. Not anytime soon. So this is more of a concern. And if John has any plans to come this way, um, I will gain power yep. if he does. Yep. So it's I certainly possible. I might be doing that. Yeah. And I will, I will use that space later as well for other things. So it's a good place to be. Cool. That is my turn. It is your turn. All right. Before I take my turn... Um, I'm actually going to retcon things just slightly. When I built this bridge, I actually really want it to be over there. Uh, so Dave was cool that <laughs> a slight change, and you'll, you'll see why soon. Um, so yeah, let's just pretend I built the bridge over there. It has nothing to do with the, uh, the things Dave did. It was more me thinking through my plans. So now on my turn, I am going to use this special action that got unlocked when I built that palace earlier. That says I can spend two power, and then I get to do a make habitable and build action with one free shovel. Uh, that shovel obviously lets me uh, make water or volcanoes habitable, and it's going to be right here. <laughs> That's why it really makes sense for the bridge to be over there. I will, I think, be heading over here soon. I just don't think it makes sense right now. So I cover this up uh, because this is within reach because it's functionally adjacent. Again, my shipping has not been upgraded at all yet. And now I can spend four of my five money in order to build this house onto that spot. So when I do that, something new happens and it is the town. Uh, I've created a town and there are two different conditions to make a town. First of all is you have to have a settlement that is at least four buildings large. A settlement is any cluster of your buildings that are directly adjacent. This does not include the uh, shipping uh, ability to go down the rivers. So that means this is a settlement of size two, and this is a settlement of size four because the bridge makes these adjacent. The other requirement is that settlement needs to have at least seven emblems associated with it. Now, you might have noticed this emblem symbol over here to the left of each one of these building rows, and that's the number of emblems that those specific buildings add to the overall settlement. The houses add one, the trading posts add two, and the palaces add three. So out here, this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight emblems. So I actually kind of overcommitted over here into making this town. 
but it's size four and it has seven or more emblems. And that means I must immediately turn this into a town. This is not an action. And in fact, it's forced the moment it becomes available. Now, when I do this, I'm going to take one of these four town tokens and I'm going to put it out there and I will immediately gain the benefit that's printed on it. That could be victory points or money or um, charging up power or upgrading shipping lanes. And I think I'm going to take this one. That is going to upgrade my shipping and give me four points immediately. When I upgrade my shipping, that'll also get me two points. And now I have one boat, so that's going to really make me more flexible to try and set out and maybe start a third settlement um, or maybe try to make this one bigger. I'm starting to think this might be a lost cause. Uh, but either way, I'm going to get those two plus four or six points. So that will bring me up to 26. And then I'm going to take this and I'll put it directly underneath any building within this overall settlement to show that this is a town. And that's important because if I expand this settlement out, it stays a town. And if you merge two settlements before they turn into a town, then you lose the ability to make a town with that next settlement. So over here, I don't really want these to be connected because I'd like for this to turn into a town. It would, of course, need at least four buildings and it would need seven emblems. Right now it's two buildings and two emblems, so a very long way away. But either way, that's the reason why I've been trying to keep these separate. Uh, we'll see how that actually goes. By getting that shipping lane, it does mean that I could potentially build over here at some point in the future, although Dave might get there before I do. Uh, all right, that is a big turn. I'm done. All right, so on my turn, I'm going to continue using the actions, the free actions that have been given to me, Yeah. which is upgrade the town into a trading post yep. for free. So I'm going to remove one of my houses. Um, and of the houses available, only these two are not eligible for a discount. Yeah. So I'm incentivized to pick one of those. So I'm thinking I'm going to pick this one. All right. I'm going to take the house away and for free place the trading house in its place. Nice. Well, Dave, I hate to say it, but I'm uh, dropping out. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be the start player next round. I'm I only have one money and I only have one power. You just got all these like free things that you yeah, keep doing. It's nice. The sea dogs are powerful but they are not fast <laughs> so uh when i drop out i am going to get two points for every trading post that's on the board we can easily see that just by looking down over here there's two openings so that is going to be two times two or four points so i go up to 30 and then this will go back over here i will keep this i mean at this point you might as well just get a tattoo of it <laughs> i think i'm going to take this bonus it's got two money on it and it's nice and versatile three money and three of those charge ups and I'm done for the round. Okay, nice. So I guess I will just start taking turns until I'm done. Yeah. And I really only have one thing to do because I just have seven money and no power and that is to build a, another um, settlement. Yep. So I will take- House. House, sorry. Settlement is the term for a cluster. <laughs> so I'll spend the $4 and take the house and place it right there. Nice. All right. It is a nice house, yeah. Nice We're house. Very nice proud house. of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> then it's my turn again, but all I have left to do is pass. So I'm going to take the scroll, place it over here, and then I will choose a scroll for the next round. And there are a couple of interesting options. And while the seven money is very tempting because it is quite a lot, I'm actually, I think I'm in actually a pretty strong position to build another palace. And thus, I will take this one for the end of round points. Nice. I also get one money. Yeah, money. Awesome. Well, that is it for the actions. So now we can remove all of the X tokens from our player boards as well. Then we'll add money, one each, onto each of these. That's surprising. This mm -hmm. one has been uh, saving up. Having a lot of money is definitely nice. All of these are honestly nice. And then we can flip this over and start the fourth out of five rounds in the game. So the bonus for this round is interesting. That says every time you do any type of shoveling, you'll get two points. That could be from free shovels that you get. Well, I guess not free, paid for by uh, power shovels like these or these or shovels that you just pay for with money. So uh, changing the landscape is definitely incentivized in this round. So now we can do income uh, in the starting player. So we'll take one of each of the non-player houses. There's not that many spaces, although I guess there's still a bunch of yellow spots. And the random one I place is yellow. All right, that's gotta be there, there, or there. I don't really see a benefit to going there. This doesn't really do anything in that. I don't know, maybe gets in Dave's way a little bit, so I'll do that. All right, 
And are there even any red or black? There is a black space left. There is no a red. single black, so yes. If I, so if I draw the black, it's going there. If I draw the red, it's just going off the board. Yep. And I have drawn the red. The red. So nice. nothing happens. Whew. And we're done. All right, now we can do income. Uh, we'll just do this in player order, and I will start with my power. I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that is going to be 5. Then, oh, 7. That exactly makes 12. So I have all eight of my power tokens ready to be used. Then for money, I'm going to get 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Ooh, that's a lot. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about that. Nice. All right, and on my side, I'll start with money. I get 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 money. Not so bad myself. And thanks to the uh, tile I got, I get 4 power plus 2 more. So I can finally 1 and then get 5 power into my bowl. Nice. Available for use. Also, Dave, I just realized I forgot to actually grab the 3 money over here. So I hmm. should get 3 more. Okay. All right, action time. I get to go first, and I have quite a bit of money available. This is the second to last round of the game, though. I have to keep that in mind. Well, I really do want to found at least one more town. The benefits for these are just really good. And this is already, you know, part of a town. It's not a very good uh, settlement, but it's, it's working its way towards a town. So I think what I'm going to do is start big and spend six of my eight power. And that's going to give me two shovels. And I'm going to use those to uh, cover these two shovels, turning a swamp into a forest. I could do that right over here. <laughs> um, and honestly, if that had been blocked by that um, random token, I could have just done that over here as well. It really doesn't matter much between these. This is slightly better, though. Um, and then I don't have to pay anything for it. Also, I just used two shovels, and I get two points per shovel. So that's going to be four points. And now I have the option of constructing onto that spot, and I will. So that's going to be for money. And hey, Dave, I built next to you. Wow. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't know what to do. This has never happened before. <laughs> that's true. I can't believe it happened yeah. this late. I mean, obviously, this benefit for building and upgrading adjacent to other players happens a lot more with more players. But uh, either way, we've definitely gotten to that point. So take your power. I would love a power. Thank you. All right. I'm done. And with the sixth power, I'm going to do the double shove. Oh. <laughs> nope. Oh, that's really what I wanted to do with it. A little bit too late. Oh, well. I'll make do. And I'll make do with my free action here, which is to upgrade a house into a trading post. And this time, it's going to be this one. I know it does get the discount already, but I really want to upgrade this one for a specific reason. So I'm going to do that. Nice. And that is my turn. Well, I can go again. And I think I'm just going to, for the first time in a long time, do a standard build action. I'm just going to build a house. I'm not even going to make anything habitable. So that's just going to cost me for money. And then I'm going to place it here before Dave, I don't know, potentially uh, transforms that. It's only one shovel for Dave and I could see him maybe doing that. So I'm just going to go there before it happens. So that's locked in. And that gives you another power, Dave. Yes. <laughs> I'm pretty excited about that. Well, I took this tile for a reason. And that reason is to get victory points. Building palaces. Yes. So that is my action. 10 plus 4. Well, 14 money is what it costs to build a palace. And to no one's surprise, I'm going to place it where I just upgraded the trading post. That makes sense. So what does uh, that benefit give you? Well, I'll tell you. Right away when I build a palace, I get to upgrade my shipping for free. And get three points. That's right. Up to 19. Now, this is only a one-time use, unlike John's, which is an action and can spend power. This is just happens when I build the palace, and that's it. Yeah, four uh, power cycling is quite nice as well. It is. I only get to experience it once, once. for yeah. the whole game, but, you know, better late than never. Yep, yep, that makes sense. All right, it's back to me, and I think I might be doing this a little bit uh, more in this round. I'm going to build another house the old-fashioned way. I'm just going to spend four money and not make anything habitable. And I do have one sailing uh, effect over here, so that means I can sail from here or here across this hex of river, and that lets me get access to this, which is my own terrain. All right, that's me done. I'm going to maybe try to start a third uh, settlement turning into a town. Well, it's definitely a settlement. It's just a settlement of one house right now. Interesting. I'm going to spend four of my power just to be versatile. 
the four power will get me this action, ah. which gives me seven money. I think this is the first time in the game that's been used, which kind of blows my mind. The last yeah. time I played this, this was used almost every round, but that was a four-player game. So oh, I see. <laughs> more yeah, people to take it. It is typically used a lot, and I think in a two-player game, maybe depending on the factions. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think partially the reason why is just because I just haven't had power the whole game. Yeah, yeah. And I've had other thing, other options to potentially spend it on. Yeah. All right, I am up next, and I'm going to spend the last two power that I have, so very exhausted, and that will let me use this effect here. Uh, this will let me make one uh, spot habitable with a uh, shovel. And I haven't mentioned this, but when you do these actions, you have the option of spending six more money to add another shovel to double shovel. We just haven't been spending that much money for it. And I do want to point out, that when you do this and you split up those uh, make habitable options, you cannot add shovels to either of those. So let's go for it. I can put a forest down. Um, there's a lot more of these tokens than what we have on screen, by the way. And I am going to put it over here, not too uh, surprisingly, right next to that house. So the uh, volcano terrain goes there with just one shovel. And that shovel is worth two points to me. So I go up to 36. Now I can build a house onto that spot, so I will. Um, <laughs> I guess I don't need to, but I still think it's a good idea. So I'll spend the four money and put this down. And I only have one other house. Um, I need to do a lot more upgrading, it seems. But either way, I'm still going to stick with this and put that right over there. Uh, so I'm going to spend two power to start my turn, which will give me two money. Then I'm going to do a make habitable and build action. And for that, I'm just going to do it the old-fashioned way. Like you said earlier, spend a bunch of it's money. It's going to take a lot of effort and a lot of money, but it will be worth it. Five, five, one, one is twelve, meaning I'm double shoveling. Holy cow! You yes. really are doing it the old-fashioned way. Yes. So you can see here when I double shovel, I can use a desert or a volcano into a uh, we call them islands now. <laughs> and the spot I am taking is this one. Oh, here I, I just upgraded. Didn't see that coming? Yes. Okay. I just upgraded my shipping to two. Yeah. And thus, uh, these are two spaces. It's two spaces away from a building I have already, and therefore I have access to it. Okay. Should be noted, it's not adjacent. No. I just have access to it. Yes. Because I have uh, terraform there for two shovels, I get four points. And I get the option to build a house there, should I want to, and I do. It's going to cost me four money, and I'll take one of my houses and place it on the spot. Hey, thanks, Dave. So hey, I get you're welcome. Two power, one for each of these adjacent buildings. So that That's goes correct. over there. And um, I think this is actually a good time to talk about final scoring, uh, considering we're coming to the end of the second to last round. Um, we've hinted at it a little bit, but um, when the game is over, we are going to count up the largest group of our buildings that are within each other's reach. So this is where the um, river connectivity comes into play. And the person who has the most of those buildings will get 12 points and second most will get eight. Um, with three and four players, it goes down from there when you're playing with the other side of the board. So this is another reason to really upgrade your shipping so that you can actually connect all of your stuff. Uh, so for example, by going here, um, Dave has made these in each other's reach and he has uh, this one will go one, two, so not quite connecting up with these, but if he upgrades one more time to three, then it'll be one, two, three, putting this into reach and these, essentially making all of these within reach for this final scoring. So just a thing to keep in mind. I see you figured out why I've gone there. Yeah, well, I was wondering at first, and then I realized it, and then I was like, wait, I haven't actually explained this yet. Also, at the end of the game, we're going to get one point for every three money we have left over. Well, it is my turn again, and I think... It probably makes sense to get another trading post out onto the board. Um, I have nine money, so I can't afford to do it the non-friendly way. So I think I'm going to be friendly now that Dave doesn't desperately uh, need the power. <laughs> now that he can't you make use of it immediately. I'm going to spend seven money. I'll put this one out and I'll put it here. It has to be adjacent to a different uh, player color building in order to get that discount. So there you go, Dave. You get another power. I will take the power now. All right, I'm done with that turn. Oh, my goodness. Are you passing? I can't believe this. <laughs> I'm out of actions. I have no money. I have no free actions. I have nothing to do but pass. All right. I'm going to pass. So Congratulations. Thank Here you. Oh, my the, goodness. Uh, holy start player token. I don't, I don't know where to put it. <laughs> I'll put it right here. Anyway, the um, first thing I do is return the scroll. And yep. the scroll does have a passing icon on it. 
Yep. And when I pass, I get four points for each palace I have on the board. I have both of them on the board. Very nice. Or a total of eight points. That brings you from 23 up to 31. That definitely closed the gap quite a bit. Yes. And I'd really, really like to take that one back again and get another eight points. Yeah, I bet you would. But I cannot. <laughs> However, the one I can take is, and I'm, it's starting to look like end of game points is a good focus right now. So I'm going to go for the um, trading post one. Yeah, I... It does come with a dollar on it as well. I wanted that, but yeah, you are able to pass but first. The Sea Dogs put some like extra boosters on their ship and <laughs> got in there first. Okay, uh, you... I have passed. Are passed. All right. Well, I'm having a bit of a Dave moment here. Uh, <laughs> the other person just dropped out, and I think I am out of things to do. So I am also going to drop out immediately afterwards. Uh, this will go over here, and I can take one of these. And this is tricky. So in the last round, we're going to get five points each time we create a town. Um, I think both of us are certainly trying to do this at least once. I have a strong suspicion Dave is trying to do this twice in that final round, and he might be able to pull it off, which is... A little scary, but either way, I do have to pick one of these. And I think there's actually a strong possibility that I build my other palace, which would give me four more points. And having extra power uh, generation is good. I'm saying no to some extra money here, but I still think this is the right call. So I will take this one. You can put it face down. Yeah, you can turn it face up. Yeah, I suppose you're right because uh, we are done. Well, we have to do those end of round steps. So mm -hmm. the first thing that we do is we remove these X tokens. We also, if we want to, we could spend our power right now to get money, but I think we're all fine there. Then we can add one money onto all of these. I would like to make a note that unlike Terra Mystica, you do pass and take one of these scrolls at the end of the game. Yeah. And thus, adding the money is important because money, three money is one point at the end of the game. Exactly, yeah. We're not going to be doing the income of the, the token that we take, but but yeah, that money certainly could be important. Um, lastly, we flip this over, and we can start the final round of the game. Uh, the first thing we do, Dave, you do the honors oh, now that it goodness. doesn't really matter much anymore. Yeah, if I draw a yellow, I can place <laughs> it somewhere. Otherwise, exactly. nothing. And I only have one <laughs> spot to put it as well. <laughs> All right. Let's see what happens. It's more of a I ceremonial got, role. No, I got the black. All right. Nothing happens. Yeah, but this, uh, this you know, two-player variant definitely filled in the board quite a bit. I could see why it makes sense to use these and use the two-player side when playing this way, just to kind of congest things a bit and add some discounts and whatnot. Um, oh, all right. Do you want to try and get the yellow? Or? That might have, that might matter for you. Good point. You're right. I, 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 I haven't gone second yet this game. I didn't <laughs> realize. It's going to be... Nope, it's the red. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't fit. Doesn't fit. Uh, yeah, that yellow definitely could have changed things. Um, either way, uh, why don't you do your income? You're you're the first. Player. Oh, I get it. Okay, I'll do it first. Okay, so <laughs> let's start with money. I'm very excited. Two, uh, four plus nine is thirteen, plus uh, four more is seventeen, which sounds familiar. I think I got that much last turn as well. So I have seventeen now, or sorry, eighteen with the one I had before, and then my power income is two here plus six on the board for a total of eight. So the five from the full three go first over here. And then I have three more, which will go into bowl number three. Nice. Um, that's my income. All right. Um, I have a whole bunch of power. That's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. <laughs> That might be overkill. Let's That's see. That's a bit over, yeah. <laughs> so this is six, which leaves 10 more, and I only have eight here. So yeah, I actually waste two of them. I mostly took this because I believe it's going to be worth eight points to me at the end of the game. Hopefully that's actually worth it, and I don't regret not having some extra money income. But either way, speaking of money, I am now going to get three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So I have 27 money for this last round of the game, and I don't get to go. You do, Dave. All right. So I know we talked about uh, my Sea Dog power, and we'll get to that very soon. But in order to make sure I get it, and so John doesn't block me, although I could spend 10 money to build a bridge as well, I'm going to spend my three power to do the bridge action. Yes. Yep. Um, oh, my first bridge of the game. Seems weird that the Sea Dogs would build a bridge, but <laughs> there we are. Um, this is going to connect my palaces. And remember, while I do have um, seven emblems worth in my settlement there, it is not a town yet because you need four buildings. Yep, it's only three. All right, that was my action. Uh, John, please go. Oh, if you insist. All right, I think 
I'm going to start big. I'm going to spend 14 money to build my other palace. That is going to go here. So Dave, I'm for the third time building next to this spot. So you get to charge up some power. Sweet. I like how you can remember and count the amount of times you've given me power. <laughs> Three times of the whole <laughs> game. Uh, and then that cleared this up. So this is a new effect that I get. Uh, and that is simple. It just says in order to make towns, I only need six emblems instead of the standard seven. I still need to have at least four buildings in that town. And speaking of that, if we look out here, this is worth three emblems, and then that's one, one, and one. So that is six emblems and four or more buildings, which means by doing that, I just made my second town. So that means I have to take one of these. And there's definitely an argument to be made for taking this and just getting nine points. But I have a sneaking suspicion I might be able to squeeze a little bit more points out of this. It is a four-point difference. We'll see. I might regret this in the end, but either way, I'm going to do this one. That is going to give me six money right now and then five points which brings me up to 41 i'll put this under that house and then of course i made a town in the round where that is giving five points so i get five more i go up to 46 all right dave nice all right so for my turn i am going to use the free sea dogs ability yep to turn a house into a trading post this is the fourth time I've done this. We should be very used to this by now. Yeah. And I'm going to take this one. There we go. And now, using the Sea Dog's ability, which is on this card here, and is, is shown by this symbol here, uh, what this means is, unlike normal towns where you all the buildings have to be adjacent, the Sea Dogs are able to build um, a town or form a town over one river space. So in this instance... Because these four buildings can be connected over this river space, I can form a town. Or this one, in fact. Yeah. Um, I would not, however, for example, my other settlement over here, this, settle this would be enough to form a town if I, these were all adjacent, but I cannot do it over two sea spaces. Right. Just one. It's also a may. I could let this sit here if I had other plans for it, but I definitely want to make this a town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so what, what happens is when I do it, I put the town marker into the river, just like this. I guess technically these are supposed to put face down like that. Yeah. That looks so a little bit nicer. Yeah. Looks, looks, yeah. It looks a little prettier. <laughs> Although you don't get to see what the reward is and no. I, should, I should show it. For my town that I'm choosing this time, I am choosing the four points, but I get to upgrade a shipping for free. So I'll place that here. And this shows that these are all connected by town and I will upgrade the shipping. So that was four plus four points then? Yeah. Eight points? Uh, eight points, yes. All right, 31 to 39. Plus, and, yeah. Yes, because it is the town building turn, I will get five more points. 44. We haven't been this close since over here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you're right around the 20 mark, I think. Nice. But that was my whole turn. So it's now your turn. Oh, and it should be noted that because I've upgraded my shipping to level three, that all my buildings are now connected for final scoring. Yeah, they're within reach. Through, through the river. Yeah, so looking at that, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight buildings currently, all that are connected with your boat on the river. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm in the lead for the moment, but you've still got a pile of money. I've still got a pile of money. We'll see how this actually goes. Well, it's now my turn, and I think I am going to spend four of my power in order to activate this. That is going to upgrade my shipping once. And I'm honestly mostly doing this to gain the victory points. Uh, I don't really need the extra distance with the shipping power. So that'll go there, giving me three points. So I go up to 49. All right. It is now my turn, and I'm going to do the make habitable and build action. But I only need to build because it is already habitable. Yep, and you can so, reach there with your boat. Correct. So I'm going to spend the four money, get one back. And I'm going to place this house here. And now, again, using the Sea Dog's ability to cross one water space in order to make a town, yep. I'm going to use this one here. This is why I needed the bridge earlier, because it does connect these three, but I cannot use both of these spaces to make the fourth building connect. Yeah, you could have transformed this into water but and yeah. then gone here, but that was two shovels versus zero. So that makes sense. Exactly. And so the bridge was cheaper. Yeah. But I had to get there fast because I was worried John might want one as well. I was interested, yeah. Well, I guess you could pay 10 money for it. <laughs> it's the benefit of going first. Uh, yeah. It does, does feel nice. <laughs> anyway, uh, because I'm making a town, I have to choose one of these tiles. And I'm not sure I have 
much use for the power and money at this point. So I'm just going to go for the straight points. This okay. one doesn't give you any bonuses. It is just worth points. So I'll place it there, and I will take nine points, please. Nine plus five, right? So that's 14. So 44, 54, 59. 59. Whew. All right. And that will end my turn. All right, it's my go, and I think the best way for me to get points in this moment is to upgrade my ship one more time. I'm going to do it uh, over here. I'm just going to spend eight money the old-fashioned way, and that will get me four points. So I go up to 53. Simple turn. My turn? Yeah. Okay. I think on my turn, I'm going to do the make habitable and build action one more time. So you know how it works by now. Um, it takes four gold. Place it over here. I'll take a house, and for this house, I'm going to put it over here. It is within range of my shipping and does not give John a power, so I like this spot a lot. Yeah. Also, importantly, you're at the same amount as me, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, so we're tied for this. And if there's a tie, then we sum the amount and split it. It doesn't really matter in a two-player game. It functionally means we're not getting an advantage on each other there. That's true. I was kind of hoping you wouldn't notice that. <laughs> All right. It's my go again. and I have money, so I think I want to get back in the lead for that um, final scoring. It's a four-point swing. So I'm going to spend four money, and I'm going to build this house. Uh, I have a huge distance. I can go up to three times on the river. So there are, it looks like, a couple of places I could go. And sure, let's go way out here. <laughs> Oh, that doesn't give me any, give me any power. That's the idea. <laughs> so looking at the resources, I could do this two more times. Yeah. But John can also do this two more times, and that means I will lose regardless. Therefore, I think I will just cut my losses and stop going for that. And on top of that, I don't really see a way to gain more victory points this turn. I could build this trading house to gain two points at the end of the turn. So you spend, but yeah. I'll spend seven and, and coins are worth one point for every three. So I'm actually overspending for two points. So that doesn't really make sense. And there is another reason to pass early and that is to grab a scroll with more money on it. Yeah. So that's pretty nice. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to pass. So in doing so, I'll take my scroll and place it here. I have three trading houses on the board, which will give me six points. There. And then I will take a scroll back, and obviously I will take the one with the most money on it for the point at the end of the game. And you're done. And I am done. All right. Oh, and I'm still first player. <laughs> um, okay. It is back to me, and I could just keep taking turns. Uh, I am in the lead when it comes to these. So I've got that four-point advantage locked in. I don't think it makes sense to build more of these out. So in search of more points, I think I'm going to spend four power to gain seven money. That will go right into my area, which is worth um, at least two more points. I haven't done the math to see if it's worth more. I think it was two. It was worth two points. And uh, after that, it's my turn again. And I think, uh, I think I'm going to pass. I think uh, given the situation, there isn't anything else I can do to really help out my position. So yeah, when I drop out, I'm going to get four points for every palace I have. I have two palaces, so that is going to be eight points, bringing me to 61. And then I will take one of these. I'll take that one. It's got a couple of money on it. And that is the game. We don't actually need to do any of the phase three end of round stuff when we get to this point. Well, I would like to, actually. Because I have an extra power here, I'm just going to spend it and get a coin. Sure. Technically, I think we don't actually do this, but you would have just done that on a previous turn. Oh, I would have done it before finished. I passed, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so yeah, we could do final scoring. Um, first thing we'll do is, um, well, we can liquidate our money. So um, at a rate of three to one, it looks like I have 16. So that is going to be five points. Ooh, and I have 14, meaning I'm just one shy of getting five. So I, get four, <laughs> I get four points. Yep. And then we do this, and uh, we've counted up. We don't need to do it again. The person with the largest um, set of connected ones gets 12 points. That's me by one. So that is 68, 78. And I get eight points, which puts me at 77. And that's oh, it. Oh, I'm one coin <laughs> short of tying. Wow. One coin short. If there's a tie, the rule book says play a full game of Terra Mystica to break the tie. Oh, the Ash, the... So 
the, the actual rule book. So that yeah, it, it functionally, if we were tied, there we would have shared in the victory. You were one coin. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> that is so close. Well, good game. Thanks yeah, for playing. Good game. Um, what do you think of this one? Oh, I really liked it. I mean, as someone who's played a lot of Terra Mystic, I'm a big fan of that game. Yeah. And while I do prefer that game, there's just a lot more going on. I've played a lot, so I enjoy the complexity. Yeah. I was actually surprised at how much I like this one. Yeah. I do like the stream. Like, if someone is new or doesn't prefer the length of Terra Mystica, I'd be perfectly happy playing this. I like how the coins were streamlined in Terra Mystica. You need coins and workers. Yeah. This one is just one resource. I thought that would just be too simple, but it turns out I don't even know if workers are needed anymore <laughs> in the other game. And yeah. yeah, it's just, it's exactly what it promises. It's Terra Mystica, a little bit lighter, and I think it delivers. What'd you think about this, uh, how this, this one play went? Um, you said yourself, you haven't played that much uh, two player Terra Mystica, if any. I know you and I played two player Gaia Project five years ago or so, which is also, right. you know, a somewhat similar game, uh, but obviously a lot more complicated than Terra Nova. I, I got to admit, I do prefer a three or four player game. I like the more intrigue with more people yeah. and other things. I did feel kind of shorted out of power for a lot of the game, although partially that's my fault. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering how different factions play with two players, but it's the same with Terra Mystica as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I'm glad it has the side of the board. I, I do think, you know, imagining this board without any of the non-blue, non-green, like we still definitely got in each other's way, but I think these things did a reasonable job of hemming things in a little bit as well. That is true. I didn't play around those enough, which also may have factored into my one point loss, <laughs> um, but it was new. I never really experienced anything quite, kind of like it before. Yeah. 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 This is fun. Uh, this is my, uh, my second time playing. Uh, last time I played with the uh, sand cats, which is a different faction. Again, there's uh, 10 different factions that come in the game and they all have different effects on them. You know, the, the Dave's Sea Dogs had an easier way of making those different areas and he got so much money out of this. It's crazy. But of course, you have to invest the time into doing that. You don't get any income. Whereas I just got a lot of income. The fairies are just the income faction as far as I can tell. And uh, <laughs> to see it be that close, there was a bit there in the middle where I was thinking I might be running away with it a little bit. But then I realized that I had made a town already and you hadn't. And so that was a, a decent snapping back of the rubber band because we both ended with two towns. Yeah, I think maybe I could have, I did wait for the end game goal, which may have been a mistake, at least for both of my towns, because if I had gone earlier, perhaps I would have expanded more and then I would have been in the lead for that. Yeah. But I would have given up five points, so I don't know if it was worth it. It's tough to say. But... Also, you know, you did the nine pointer, which is good, but if you had made a town a round or two earlier, you could have gone for one of these, which is less points, but maybe the extra effects would have catapulted you into some of the other benefits that were happening in the middle of that round. Like you I did. could have maybe dug more holes and that kind of thing. Well, even in the last round, I think I could have gone for this one, which would have been four less points had I planned really far ahead. Yeah. But I would have had six money, which means I would have had more money and I would have won the kind of the building arms race. Yeah. I think you probably um, would have outbuilt me in that case. Yeah. And in fact, I didn't even look for far enough ahead. I should have looked at your board and noticed you only had one uh, house left. Uh huh. And I could have outbuilt you. Uh, but I, I did. I could have also, I, I had a decent amount of money. I might have been able to swing in and like build this and then swap and then build one more. You didn't have enough for that. No, I, uh, yeah. yeah you, didn't, you had enough for two more houses and I also had enough for two more. And um, I just factored that. I didn't actually see you just had one. Uh, but say la vie, I didn't do it. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining me for this, Dave. This was a lot of fun. Oh, thanks for having me. And it was a lot of fun. I, <laughs> I did really enjoy this game. Awesome. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgamescom support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.